Hello. In this video, I will show you how to improve the visuals of Vera. I'll show you how to go from something that looks like this, which is just a standard Vera form, which is kind of cartoony looking, into something that's a little bit more realis realistic looking, like in this particular video right here. This video was actually exported from VRAP using the built-in video recorder, which I will also show you how to use. So, let's begin. We begin by adding texture to these plain looking cuboids. You can add your own cuboids into the scene by selecting Add, Primitive Shape and then Cuboid. Select one of the cuboids and then double click the cube shape. Under other parameters you have the option of adding texture to the object. And there's two methods of doing it. Select Adjust Texture and then select from existing textures. And here there's a couple of predetermined textures that you can add to your objects. Right now the mapping mode is projection, which means that the image is projected from the top or the bottom onto the object. And that's why you see these streaks and smears along the edges. Select mapping mode and change cube so that the images are projected on each side perpendicularly. If you for example had a sphere or a cylinder you could select the appropriate option right here. You can remove the texture by selecting clear textures. Alternatively you can add your own images by selecting the quick texture button and here you now can select which image you want to add to your object. So here I have just a simple concrete texture. One thing that you should uh, note, if you change the color of your object, the texture still remains, meaning you could have, for example, red concrete or uh, turquoise concrete. So whatever your texture is, you can still change the color of your object. Alternatively, you can also change the opacity, meaning you can make the object see-through. And this is something that you might want to use if you're either working with glass or if you have a very cluttered scene and if you want to be able to see what's going on behind your object. You can also apply multiple visualization options to the same object at once. Select multiple uh, cuboid objects by uh, holding control and clicking on multiple objects. And if you by accident selected the wrong object, you can, uh, while holding control, you can click it again, it, it will deselect it. Now select scene object properties to, vi to see all of the object properties. And now you have these apply to selection buttons, which allow you to change uh, all of the properties to all of the objects that you have selected. The one thing that I would like to show you here is this uh, show edges dialog. VRAP draws black edges around every object by default and using this option you can make these lines either thicker. Alternatively you can also change the color of these and uh, for a sort of a frame effect or a more cartoony effect. Alternatively, you can also not show any edges at all. And when you select apply to selection, now you don't have any uh, edges shown. And you get this uh, very much real looking uh, type of appearance. I would encourage you to uh, play around with this option and see what works best for you. Another thing that you can do to improve the look of your scene is to add lighting. Right click anywhere in the scene and then select add and then light and let's add a spotlight into the scene. So now you have the spotlight object. Using the object item shift dialog you can click it and drag it around along the X and Y axis. And uh, under mouse translations, you can actually select whether it's supposed to be X and Y or Y and Z. An alternate method to move it around is while clicking it and dragging it, 
pressing the control key will now let you move it along the Z axis. And you can see how the light is being thrown on various objects and that's changing the look of the scene itself. I will rotate this spotlight by 90 degrees to have it shine down onto the scene and that way you can add a darkened type of warehouse or you can um, ensure that there is only light in certain locations. I will move it up a bit If you want to adjust the properties of the spotlight, you can double click on it. And here you have a couple of options. You can, for example, change the size of the spotlight itself. You can also change the angle of the spotlight, which is uh, set as a maximum for 90 degrees. Uh, let me make it a bit more drastic. So here you can change it to make it larger or smaller. The spot exponent, constant attenuation factor and quadratic attenuation factors all change how the spotlight behaves. And I encourage you to play around with the values to see what kind of an effect it has on your scene. Alternatively, you can adjust the casing color. So if you want to use it directly as a light within your scene or you can also adjust the light color right now it's set to something that's a very neutral color but alternatively you can make everything uh, have a red hue to it and uh, that you can see directly changes the color of the objects that are affected by the light The next thing I'm going to show you is how to change the appearance of the environment itself. Select Tools and then Environment, and here you have the environment properties. The first thing I'm going to show you is how to change the, um, the background colors. Uh, the background colors have two different colors, the top and the bottom color. So if you want to change, for example, the bottom one, select the background, sorry, the top one, select background up, and then you can um, just add uh, change it and you'll see that uh, there is a gradient from the bottom color to the top color so this background color is just something that you can change um, to make things a little bit more pleasing on the eye if you're working for long periods of time or to create a specific contrast if you have certain colored robots alternatively you can also color them whatever uh, organization uh, you represent, whatever their colors are. If you want to change the ambient lighting, you can select this button and then you can change it from a neutral color to, for example, uh, uh, set everything to be red or uh, green or whatever uh, ambient light you want. The next thing I'm going to show you is um, this fog parameter. Click on adjust fog parameters and then you get the fog settings. When you select fog enabled you actually reduce your own view distance. So this allows you to kind of um, limit how far you can see. However it also creates this very neat uh, realistic look. You can also adjust the fog color if you want it, um, well, a specific color. The fog settings make it look very kind of realistic. For example, look what happens when I move the spotlight around. It actually, um, well, you can simulate, a, for example, a dark room with very limited amount of lighting. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, I've read in the forums that VROP currently does not uh, support shadows. However, they did say that they're working on a ray tracing engine. So eventually, by moving the spotlight, you will also see um, 
shadows move, but that's currently not actually supported. So in this way, you now made the scene look a lot more realistic than that previously cartoony look before. And finally, I'm going to show you how to record your scene. There is a built-in functionality in VREP, which you can access by selecting Tools and then Video Recorder. You get this video dialog that has a couple of options that I should talk about. The first uh, option allows you to launch uh, the video recorder at the next simulation start. So when you press Start, it will begin recording and it will output it into the following location, which is shown right here. Um, this show cursor will allow you will actually display the cursor as you move around so you can actually use it as an instructional tool this show button states i'm going to um, demonstrate for you uh, i'll click record now and now you see this cursor following my real cursor and actually since i have show button states enabled it will now actually show what kind of buttons i'm currently pressing it will also show you when I'm um, select, uh, pressing a button while having a uh, button pressed on my keyboard. So, for example, if I do shift click, it actually will tell you. So, this is a very neat functionality. Let me stop recording. And whenever you stop recording, it will tell you exactly where it, output, um, where it outputs the file and um, what the, the file name is. Uh, here you can have a wide range of output types and this is something that I encourage you to uh, experiment because you might have different requirements for file size or quality. Uh, so there's a wide option so try out a couple and see what happens. And uh, the video resolution is currently fixed and I believe that's pretty much close to my uh, own resolution. So let's take a look at what happens when we run uh, the uh, recorder. I have selected launch at next simulation start. So now I run this. Uh, every time you launch a simulation uh, with the recorder, it actually depresses the button. So you have to enable this option every time you want uh, to record. Alternatively, you can just click record now whenever uh, whenever you want. So it's recorded for a couple of seconds. Um, so we can zoom in and uh, let's stop and see what the output is. As you can see, it didn't record any of the toolbars. However, it did record the model browser and the scene hierarchy. So what we want to do let me just fast forward through it a little bit. What we want to do is we probably, if you want to uh, record a video for an actual presentation, we probably want to disable those, um, which we can just do by pressing the X right here and X right here. So now when you record, you will record the entire screen. If you want to bring back the model browser, just click on um, well, the scene hierarchy button and here is the model browser. So again, let's try recording it, playing, and then there you have it. Stop it. And now the entire video was recorded and looks a lot neater. So you can now use this particular video to export it into your presentation or uh, for school or work or whatever your purpose is. So this is how I improve the visuals in my simulations and um, I'm actually not using the video recorder to record this, these videos, I'm using external software. Uh, however, if you have any kind of tips and tricks on how to make VREP more realistic looking, please feel free to add them in the comments below. And if you have any kind of suggestions for future video, please let me know as well. Thank you for watching.